Hey, good morning, and welcome to again to uh, Everyday Thoughts. Today's Friday, February 28th. Uh, only one more day, extra day this year because of leap year, so we have the 29th tomorrow, and we'll talk about that then. This morning, I want to talk and have us consider together this whole idea of what is hope. What is your hope? Where, do you, where does your hope lie? What do you hope in? Do you use hope in the sense of, I hope my circumstances change. I hope that the weather is not too cold. I hope my boss changes at work, that my husband or wife or my children start acting differently. I just hope that it's different today. I hope that so much. You see, those thoughts about hope connect hope to the temporary, to the immediate, about what makes me happy right now. Biblically, what Christ secured for you and me when he talks about hope is something that is secure, that's not tied to my circumstances. So hope connected to circumstances, they don't fit. Because we're not talking about, when we're hoping, we're not talking about changing in circumstances. We're talking about trusting and believing what has already been given to me. And no circumstance can alter that hope. In Psalm 25, we read these words. David is saying this, Look upon my affliction and my distress, and take away all my sins. For he's saying his troubles are multiplied, his heart is in anguish. See how my enemies have increased, and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. So we would think at this point then, the prayer is to make all those things go away. I hope my enemies go away. I hope I'm better. I hope I'm not afflicted. But no, what does he say in the next verse in 27? May integrity and uprightness protect me because my hope is in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me for my hope is in you. Wow, think about that. His hope is in the integrity that he has from God. His goodness, he knows, comes from God because he knows he can't be good by himself. So his hope is that God who gives him these things will sustain him. It's God's goodness. It's God's vision of integrity that he's given David because he's a new man. He's been restored, as Psalm 51 so beautifully states. He's encouraged. So think about this with me. David is not saying make all those things go away. He's saying let me hope in what is certain. Let me hope in the fact that I have integrity because you've given it to me. I have upright standing because I've been made righteous by your beautiful sacrifice for me. We muddy the waters when we talk about hope in change of circumstance. Hope is a good, solid thing. It endures. It lives transcends our circumstances. There's no circumstance that you and I face where there's not hope available to us. It's about buying into what God has. It's about buying into what Jesus has given us on the cross. If you're in a tough situation this morning, even if you're in an abusive situation this morning, you have hope. Not to remain where you are, but to continue to trust and have the courage to do what God tells you to do. See, that's not changing circumstances. That's walking in faith. That's walking in trust. Letting God's integrity that has been given to you in Christ protect you. Follow David's example today. Don't make hope about what you do or about changing your circumstances. Make hope about what has already been given for you, secured by the precious blood of Christ. You think about that this weekend. We don't have to hope that the coronavirus or anything else is going to not be be as bad as it could be. We know that we have a living hope secured for us by the person and beauty and sacrifice of our Lord. Think about that. Have a great day. Give me some thoughts. Give me some feedback. Love to hear from you all. Lord bless you. And again, thanks so much for being here on this this opportunity for us to talk about life and everyday thoughts. Have a good day. Bye-bye.